Did you know there's some things God can't do? God can't lie. He can't fail. He can't make a mistake. And he can't not be there. <laughs> oh, I wish you, you, ah, you need to write it down. He can't lie. He can't fail. He can't make a mistake. And he can't not be there. That's why the children of Israel just called him Shammah. Because Shammah means God is there. He's Jehovah Shammah. God is there. Write that down in your notes. I think that's pretty good. There's some things God can't do. He can't lie. He can't fail. He can't make a mistake. And he can't not be there. He's a very present help in our time of trouble. There are seven satanic seats. Now what this does is prove. Did you know that Satan is not omniscient? He does not know all things. Oh, I just felt fresh revelation come on me. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just praise him. I, I feel the Lord here. Father, in the name of the Lord. Help our minds to receive. Let our spirits receive. Let us learn of you in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Am I boring you? Are you learning? I know we're tired, but are we learning? Let me tell you this. The devil is not God, nor is he a little God. He is not in any way God. He is a created creature. God is eternal. He is infinite. Lucifer is finite. He has a beginning and an ending. But God is Alpha and Omega. He can see the end from the beginning. So Lucifer cannot be omnipotent because Jesus said, Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. But then he also said, All power in heaven and in earth is given unto me. Heaven and in earth, Jesus said, is given unto me. Then he said, Acts 1 and 8, Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now, if he had all power and he gives me some of his all power, how much power does that leave the devil? I don't think you're listening. The only power he has is what I give him with the confession of my mouth. Because the power of life and death is in the tongue. So if I open my mouth and confess I'm healed, I'm scared, I'm afraid, I'm lonely, I'm lustful, I'm poor, I'm broke, I'm in poverty, I'm negative. I'm I begin to release and empower him and I begin to tell him what's going on in my life. <laughs> so he cannot be omnipotent. He cannot be omniscient and he cannot be omnipresent. So if you understand there are seven satanic seats, there are princes, that's what principalities are in governments, seven hierarchical spiritual princes that rule in different areas of the world. I don't know exactly, different people have different opinions where they are, I don't know, I can't prove it to you scripturally, so I'm not going to tell you, but they have different opinions about where they are. That means that Lucifer has to literally rotate because the Bible says like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So he goes from here to there to there. He cannot be at all places at all times. That's why I tell people, they say, oh, I've been fighting the devil. I say, no, you haven't. They said, oh, yes, I am. I'm like, no, you haven't. You're not important enough to fight the devil. You have been fighting the flesh and demons. If you're fighting the devil, you're doing a lot more than I thought you were. Because the devil is worried about these countries and regions where he's sending millions of people being destroyed and killed and die and going to hell. That's where Lucifer's working. If he's, oh, I've been fighting the devil. You're not fighting the devil. You're fighting demons. You're fighting demonic principalities and mentalities. You're fighting spirits, rulers, spiritual darkness in high places, and you're fighting flesh. Hmm. Amen. Am I making sense? Am I boring you? Rulers of darkness. B, spiritual powers. Spiritual powers. So you understand that. God is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. Lucifer is not. He cannot be everywhere at the same time. He has to rotate. That's why I believe at different times in the world, at different times in the world, there are greater problems in different places because I believe Lucifer shows up and is there. Right now, I believe that there are several places in the world that, you, that Lucifer could be. 
because they are places where his will is what is his will to destroy destiny to divide to divide families to cause murder and for people to innocently be thrown to hell before they get the gospel preached to them and I'm going to tell you right now the places in the world that are under the greatest persecution you mark it are the places that God has marked by his eternal plan for the greatest revival and the pataba the places that are under greatest persecution right now in the world are the places that's about to have the greatest revival because you can't stop it rulers of darkness this is geographical territorial spirits that are assigned to regions then be spiritual powers spiritual powers are demons that harass ignorant people and unbelievers and sometimes prayerless believers these are these are people spiritual powers what we would call demons number three satan specific strategy now i just proved to you didn't i prove to you in the greek that there are methodias and there's noma there are methods and there are schemes satan has specific methods and specific schemes i feel like i'm about to be like vesta mangan this is what she does when she's teaching to make sure everybody's listening. Punch your neighbor and say, wake up. It's all right to admit it, you're tired. How many are getting sleepy? How many ready for a nap? How many just ready to go hang out, and spend money, go to the Chinese market? It's okay to admit it, dear Lord. But we are learning something and I appreciate so much the way that you're helping me. There are six different areas that, that Satan's strategy works. A, snatching away spiritual seeds like a bird. Now, now this, <laughs> this is where I get really intense as a preacher. You say, you haven't been intense already? <laughs> it is imperative that right after revelation is preached that you need to get alone and pray and meditate until you can get that seed in the soil. Because there's a period of time where the revelation, whether you read the word or it was a preached word or it was a prophetic word, when it is given you, it is given in the form of a seed that's biblical. It's a Bible principle. The seed is on the soil, but through your labor and travail and meditation, you put the seed down in the soil before it can grow. So immediately after you receive a prophetic word, a revelation from the Bible or a preached word, what will happen? The phone will ring. Somebody will invite you out to eat a crisis will happen the taxes the taxi will break down on the way home something will happen that will cause you to get busy to pull yourself out of the spirit and before you know it the enemy will come like a bird and poom, take the seed and two or three days later you realize oh my god I didn't get that then when the preacher preaches it again instead of you going oh my god I got that you look at him like oh have I ever heard that yeah oh I think I may have heard that somewhere before but the seed was snatched out of the soil so when you receive a word that you know, how, Brother Super, how do I know it's a word? And I think I told you this already. Did I teach you about the Elizabeth kick? How that John, okay, in the bosom, how that when the anointing comes, there's a kick in your spirit. Okay, that's how you know it's a prophetic word for you. You felt something kick. That's why when I'm preaching, sometimes I go, oh, and I don't know why. Years I didn't know. I just, oh, what was that? And I realized that's a prophetic witness. My spirit is witnessing. Sometimes I'm preaching to myself. Sometimes I preach stuff I don't even know what I'm saying, and I'm up here preaching, and I, oh, good God, what was that? And I realized revelation came, and it flowed through me. So, and, and, and I learned that if I did not get quiet and get alone, at our church sometimes people People would get offended because there were some services when I was through ministering or whatever I would leave and I had a man his name was Ronnie B Ronnie B big Ronnie he he used to be a hit man for the KKK by the time he was 18 he had killed people with high-powered rifles he had shot african-american people I pastored in the area that years ago it was the KKK capital I don't have time to get into that but if you've ever heard of the KKK they're real it's true it did happen his father perverted him, raised all this. God delivered him, saved him. When he got in the church, he decided he was going to be my bodyguard. Nobody was going to mess with pastor. He'd drive me around. Nobody, my own family would leave me alone. And I'd look at Ronnie and nod, and he would get me out of the church. And people say, Brother Super, don't talk to me. I got a problem. I want to talk to Brother Super. Listen, when the man of God is under prophetic anointing, you need to have enough courtesy to not want to counsel with him, not want to talk to him. Now, if he's just normal standing around, fine. He's a human like you are. But if there's a prophetic word God's trying to birth in him and give to him, he's got to get alone where that word can get in his spirit. Same way with people in the church. If they walk by you after a prophecy, or a sermon don't get offended and say oh they didn't speak to me they're trying to get something in their spirit and they don't have time to allow the enemy to snatch it away 
How many times some of you say, oh my God, but this is true. I have lost prophecies and words in my life because the enemy came and snatched it away before it got in my spirit. B, taking away spiritual rights, making you spiritually insecure, spiritually impotent to where you feel you don't have any authority. You don't have a destiny. You don't have a ministry. You don't have anything. A 